made an orange bar car school. Yeah. I assume it was okay. So how did y'all tell me about y'all experience at Orange Park? Right. Like, okay. Was, I don't know T since since uh since Pop Warner we started playing Pop Warner Orange Park I mean OPA. Yeah. Then 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 we went up the OPJ. Then we got here, but uh when I first got here, started out freshman team, so, uh freshman year. I went like T, I ain't go straight to varsity, you know. Uh <laughs> sophomore year, sophomore year. Uh, played regular JV for most of the year. They got pulled up in the year on that team. And then uh, Coach Green came in junior year. Danny Green, shout out Coach Green. Hey. <laughs> and then uh, when he came junior year, that's, that's when it really started happening. And then uh, I started my junior year, senior year. <laughs> but, uh, but uh from now on went to Orange Park Junior High and then came up to Orange Park High School and like Hayden said, you know, ninth grade year played on all of the teams. We played the freshman team, J V B, then went up to J V A and then end of the year got to play uh varsity. And then uh Danny Green came my tenth grade year, Hagen eleven uh eleventh grade year. And uh, you know, history was made ever since then. We uh we kinda uh, took it upon ourselves uh as a team. As players that we knew one another to, to make to make Orange Park something better than what it's ever been, I think we accomplished that. Okay, okay. Tell me about the moment you knew y'all fell in love with football. Like what what moment did you I know? I got a funny story about that. So my first year playing, I played baseball first. Okay. And then I went to football. My first year, actually, I played one year of flag football. I told my folks, I was like, I can't play flag football no more. I want to hit somebody. <laughs> I played at the Y for one year, and then I, you know, and then I started playing tackle. My first year, I played center, but I didn't realize playing football, we had to do all that running, conditioning, calisthenics. And my first year, playing, you know, the cats even knew me. And I wouldn't quit. My dad wasn't the head coach; he was, he was one of the coaches, though. Yeah. yeah I told me, I said, like, "Dad, man, I'm sorry. I don't want to play no more. This, man, it's hard. All this running stuff." He's like, "All right." He said, "You're gonna quit. I'm gonna keep coaching." Tell uh, Coach Jim was the head coach at the time. You gotta go and tell him you ain't gonna play no more. Yeah, I, I was eight years old. I said, Nah, I ain't gonna do all that. <laughs> I stuck it out, and it's a wrap from then. <laughs> oh, I, I, I was my first love was baseball, and uh, that's what my mama put me in. I love baseball, but then I think around like the fifth and sixth grade, you know, I started. You know, I always watched football and I always loved football, but I just wasn't able to play it. Yeah. And uh, I think my first time ever getting some real good contact on somebody. <laughs> I don't know what it was about, it just hitting somebody and uh, just all the all the things that come with football in terms of, you know, you got the game, you got practice and stuff, but the people that you meet while you play football, you have a lifetime friendships that never be broken like I got with you two. So, you know, um, that's what I think that's why I fell in love with football. Just the fact, simple fact that it's a game that you work so hard for during the week just to just just for one just for sixty minutes. Just for 60 minutes, and, it, and it, it's kind of teaches you about life also, that you have to work hard when people aren't watching. So when they do watch, they can see the, the, the good product of what, what football can show. So I think that's why I really love football. I found out when I really wanted to play too, and I really fell in love with it. Y'all remember Trey McDowell? Yeah, I remember. Big Trey? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he was bigger than everybody back then. Looked like a grown man back then playing. First time I hit him, he got me. <laughs> After that, I, I got him, man. All the coaches were screaming. I was like, why, you know, why are they screaming? You know, it's like his third year playing football. Yeah. And he's a big dude, man. And I got him. After that, you know, rap. There it goes. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> All right. At what moment in your life did you know that you was more gifted than everybody else around you, that, that your talent, that you truly unlocked your true potential of football? I don't think I'll ever, I don't think I've ever reached that in terms of me being more gifted than most people because I've always met people that have been more gifted than me. Yeah. But the thing that I think that separated me from them that where I knew I would, I would make it and, I, and they did it is I took what people actually told me of what to actually do to become great. Yeah. And I actually, you know, I, I, I actually tried to do those things and what I tried to do. Uh, I was told by one coach, uh, if, if, you're, if your last rep ain't your best rep, then it's not a great rep at all. All them other reps that you did ain't mean nothing. 
So I try to make everything, you know, everything that I do the best rep that I can be. And every weight that I lift, never skip a rep. Or every rep, every sprint that I take, try to, if I can go, if I only got 80% of my tank, if I can go 100% of that 80, and those other cats only going 80 of their 100, I know I can make it. I agree a lot with T. I, I don't know if I've ever been the most get there. You know, God blessed me with a lot of abilities. And, and, you know, 6'3 body, all that good stuff, man. <laughs> but, but one thing with me, I just always outworked everybody, no, no matter circumstance. And I just never had to have anybody tell me. I always knew what I wanted to do and how I wanted to do it. So, you know, I believe, you know, what you do when nobody's looking is who you are. And, man, I've always, I've always felt like I've always outworked everybody. So I know that's getting what I've got. Okay, okay. All right, so about, tell me about a moment in your life that really got your attention, focus, and, like, I got to take everything more serious to make my life better and our situation better. Uh, I know it started getting a little serious when I got to middle school. See, I think, that, I think that's what really separates, you know, football players who are in it for themselves and real true team players. Because a real true team player, they're going to do their job and they love to see when their teammate does a great job. So those are some of the plays that stick out to me. We're talking, we're talking high school, college, what? In Manila. Okay. Uh, favorite play? My favorite play for me personally would be uh, senior year when uh, we beat App State. 
and we went into overtime with him, and I got a pick to end the game. And uh, yeah, that, that was that was a good moment right there. Okay. All right. Tell me about the moment you realized that your dream of playing at the highest level came true. Man, uh, my moment was uh. My moment actually was when we just lost to NC State in the uh, in the uh, Bitcoin Bowl my senior year of college, and uh, I was down. You know, I was I was upset that I didn't leave UCF with a win because that's always how I wanted to do it. And then, uh, but after the game, uh, Coach O'Leary told me uh, he said, you know, Plum did it the right way. You know, you've always been a class kid, and I know you'll you'll last for a little while in the NFL. And uh, when he told me that, because he's never given me a compliment. <laughs> and then that's that's what he is. He's, he's our leader. He was our general. He led with an iron fist. So for him to, you know, say that, you know, that's when I realized, you know, if he thinks I can do it, and I know I can do it, and I don't think nothing can stop. I guess for me, you know, because you grow up, you always have that goal and dream. And I always told myself I was going to do it because that's, that's what I was going to do, I, you know. It, but I guess it really, really came – I saw that was going to happen. I guess going into my senior year, you know, when all the scouts started showing up to practice, you know, I went to a smaller school, you know, and when they all started showing up, you know, throughout spring ball, summer camp, you know, coming to practice and watch you, you know, that's when you realize, that's, you know, things coming true. Okay. All right. What, tell me something that you, as a man in today's society, what would you want to accomplish outside of football? Like a part that you can leave outside of football in today's society? Personally, man, it's about giving back to the youth. That, that, that's, you know, that's the future. And, and right now, this youth, I feel like needs it more than ever with the, everything going on. Uh, you know, these kids, man, they got so many people trying to so many different so many different things. So I, I really feel like this youth, if they give me some direction, and if I can get back in the type of way, that's what I want to do. I think my, my thing is,
why everybody say you was a ball player. Like, it, it, the first thing that if you say, uh, TP retired, and they say, man, what you thought about TP on the field, man? That kid was a ball player. And you know what a ball player is. A ball player is somebody who brought it every game, every second, and went out there and, and left his heart on the field, left, his, left, left everything he had on the field. That's what a ball player is. Despite whatever went on, and despite if the team won or lost, you remember that that kid was a ball player. You repeat that question, sir. <laughs> After everything is said and done, what mark would you want to leave in the football world? Like, what do you remember yeah. for? I, I agree a lot with TP. Uh, I agree a lot with that, but just just that he was that guy. You know, when it come down to it, man, he was that guy in a good way on that field, man. You know, you can rely on him. He was always, but not just on the field, off the field, and everything I do, man. You know, just that guy, man. He gonna, he gonna be there. You know, he, he ain't gotta worry about him. Consistent, man. Just, you know, he gonna give it all he got. Every play, every down, every snap. right now I know it's probably gonna be through sports that's what I've grown up knowing and love uh, so you know working with kids and uh, just as far as my family you know I've always been you know just helping them anywhere I can anywhere they need just always be there for that's, that's the main thing with me um, but yeah in my future it's gonna be some way giving back to kids probably through sports um, but I, yeah, that's something I look forward to I'm saying with hey I don't know how I'm gonna give back in terms of the fact that if I want to be a coach, uh, we got some ideas about setting up our own facility in Orange Park for the kids to train and for it to be. Um, Ooh, they ain't know about that. Yeah, but, oh, yeah, but we'll shit. keep that under wraps. <laughs> Shout out to Zoe, man. Yeah, Shout out to Zoe. Zoe. But uh, we um we got some things that we want to do, and uh, as far as my family, I just want to raise my kids to be you know good kids. That's all. I mean, I, I feel like that's what any parent wants. You know. Uh, a lot of parents, I feel, put pressure, you know, on their kids sometimes in terms of, you know, they want their kid to be this and that. You gotta get, you gotta, he gotta be an engineer. He gotta be a, a super basketball player. Yeah. I just want my kids to be good kids, and if, if if I let them be good kids and let them chase their passions and whatever they want to do, they'll be successful in whatever it is. I'm not never gonna push them on any the type of way, but if they do ask for daddy's help, daddy gonna be able to help. <laughs> so that's that's what I got for my family. They love, they love. Yeah. I know y'all won't be here today without support.
so <laughs> Earl, Uncle Earl. Earl. up to you guys, what message do you want to leave for them? I got something for that. Uh, don't ever let anybody tell you what you can and can't do, man. Don't ever let another cat tell you what you can and can't do. If you got something, as long as it's good and positive, and you listening to your mom, your dad, your teachers, but outside of that that realm, for you internally, man, don't ever let another cat tell you what you can and can't do. You, you control yourself, your destiny, and man, I mean, one that you gotta go get it, man. And man, stay off that Pokemon, stay off that internet. Nah, but, nah, but man, yeah, it, for real though, man. Whatever, whatever you got, your passion, your desire, man, you go get it and you give it all you got. Give everything you got. My own, like what Hagen said, you know, uh, usually I, I want to teach the kids, you know, leave your mark on the timeline. And by leave your mark on the timeline, I mean, in a good way, in terms of, I'm not saying leave your mark as in, that's the guy who got in trouble in high school. And you don't want to be remembered for those things. If you're a football player, you don't want to be remembered for, oh, he was so good on the football field, but why he didn't go to college? But I mean, leave your mark. That butt. But. That butt. <laughs> yeah, but when I say leave your mark, I'm talking about on the timeline. You know, in school, you get the chronological order. Mom, um, this is what happened in 1887. This is what happened in 1947. When they come to on the September 29th of 2016 and they leave a mark. Oh, this kid scored three touchdowns, five sacks, two interceptions. Like this those, kid came from a cure with cancer. Yeah. You know? Or yeah, in either way, this kid, this kid literally found a cure to cancer. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what I mean by leave your mark. Leave your mark on this world because life is long, but life is short at the same time. So in this short span of life that you have, you gotta leave your mark. That's all I'm telling the kids, leave your mark on positive. That influence the world in a great way. That's gonna wrap it up for this interview. Thank you for Terrence Plumber. No Thanks, Jake Hagen. Yes, sir. Come tune in next time for the next interview or next series that we have. The Willie Will. My man's up next.